Good evening, everybody. Uh, this is a rolling mill expansion where we have a special alloy steel company uh, making, making auto grade steel. And we were changing uh, the rolling mill uh, from a country rolling mill to a continuous rolling mill. So projects are important for growth. And we realized that in a brownfield, bad planning and execution can create a mess. And our expertise in that company was in steel making, not in project management. In fact, the entire team had not implemented any project at all. Uh, so it was new for everybody. So we thought, because of the complexity of a brownfield, we need a good execution methodology. Needed a project management office who will have expertise in methodology, also in project management. Where did it all start? In a Japanese restaurant in San Francisco. Last year, in June, I was in San Francisco for a holiday. And Ajay Kapoor, a batchmate of mine from IIT Delhi, electrical engineering, a person whose practicals I have copied all through my stay in IIT. We were having dinner, and I asked him, what did he do? And he was telling me about some project management stuff. I said, that sounds like critical chain. I had read that book six, seven years ago, and he said, that's what we do. Ended up hiring realization to implement our uh, uh, project of rolling mill expansion. So the background of Vardaman Special Steels and this 120,000 tons per annum expansion. We, are, we were a capacity of about 90,000 tons, taking it up to 120,000 tons, uh, later on taking it to 200,000 tons. Vardaman is really a textile company. Cotton yarn, we are the largest cotton yarn producer in the country, second largest producer of swing thread in the country. Uh, those are our sales, but Vardaman also manufactures steel. And steel is about 10% of the group's turnover. It's a small division, but decided as a family, we decided we want to grow the steel business. Those are a list of our customers, so Toyota, Maruti, Nissan, almost all the auto companies. Uh, our products go into uh, gears, crankshafts, pins. So all the critical components in a motorcycle or car or some other, or some other vehicles. Why was this project critical? Actually, Vardaman began the steel business in 73 with an investment of 1 crore. Over the years, we spent 18 crores, 62 crores, 8 crores, etc. The total gross block of the business was 85 crores till two years ago. And we implemented a new project worth 155 crores. So I'll just give you an idea, for this company, this project was huge. And for me personally, this is my first venture as whole soul. MD of this company. So this was just two years ago I got charged of this company. I had 20 years experience in textile, zero experience in steel, uh, and certainly no experience in a brownfield expansion. And this decision to take this project I took in one day, because I realized uh, to survive in this business, we need to, to, to deal with companies like Toyota, and so therefore you need to have a totally different kind of uh, rolling mill. And this particular project addressed P, our productivity and production was increasing, Q, our quality was improving, C, our cost, our variable costs were coming down, as of course overheads come down whenever you have an expansion. D, delivery, so we had a 38 day uh, rolling cycle, that means whenever a new product line was coming in, after 38 days that size would come again. So that was coming down to 15 days, so improving service to our customers, safety, and morale. After 10, 12 years, you're investing money in the steel business. Now, the steel division of a textile group, you think you're a second stepson or stepchild. So suddenly, we're talking steel in this company, and this big investment has uh, dramatically improved the morale. In fact, attrition of people came down from 25% to 8, 9%. And our steel company, last this year, came in the, 50, in the 50 great places to work under 1,000 employees. Why do we need a different approach? When I saw this chart, I couldn't understand the head or tail of this chart. So this is basically our rolling mill, current rolling mill. The red is the current rolling mill, the brown out there is the, red, is the current rolling mill that we had. And this was the new rolling mill we had to put in. We have no space. 
and you have to put up this full rolling mill while production is going on and imagine the situation there is red hot bullets passing through and construction going on below. So, construction workers are afraid of even entering the construction area. So, all stuff you were doing was continuous rolling mill, walking hearth furnace, etcetera, etcetera. What do you need? Approval internally by the board, some government approvals, sales and marketing plan, you are increasing capacity substantially, hiring plan, training plan on new infrastructure, production ramp up plan, supply chain plan. So, there is a huge amount of work to be done and how quickly can get be 100,000, 120,000 tons after the expansion. So, in addition to my role in Vardhaman Special Steel, I am also ED of Vardhaman Textiles. So, I have my own portfolio of stuff there. So, I was extremely busy. So, what did I do? Delegated the entire decision making to my team in steel and hired a full time project manager who had 30 years experience in production. So, no project experience, but he was somebody who knew this business very well. We decided on going in for the best rolling mill manufacturer that we knew, a company called Margaret Schammer from Sweden. Everybody told me I was crazy ordering this kind of equipment because it is too expensive for a small plant like ours. Originally, we thought it is just two companies, Vardhaman and Margaret Schammer. Then of course, you realize you have the consultant, architect who gives all the drawings. You have of course, the contractor. Within Vardhaman, you have the full structure of the team. You have to manage the existing operations. Uh, space constraints, it is a, it's a very tight space area and we have to have shutdown because you had to remove an existing rolling mill and put in the new one. So, you have to plan shutdowns in the middle. In addition, uh, placing orders, tracking deliveries because the same purchase team was looking at the normal purchase as well as project purchase. Hiring requirements, conducting interviews. Now, Morgan Schammer also was basically three entities Morgan Schammer, Sweden, Danieli Automation, Italy, Danieli Automation, Kolkata, and manufacturing is going on in Sweden, China, Thailand, Spain, Italy, and Danieli India was Kolkata, Bangalore, Baddi, Nagpur. Added to that uh, other vendors. So, suddenly the whole thing, which looked like a simple decision of putting on a rolling mill expansion, was turning out to be a nightmare. In addition to that, since this was my first venture as a company that I was independently running, I was very ambitious. So, we had a rolling mill upgradation plan of 120,000 tons. We had to add warehouses in various places because we, we want to add to our customers. So, warehouse in Bilaspur, quality finishing line as part of this expansion, adding other value added products like quench and tempering, annealing in new location, bright bar additions, all these were new things we wanted to do because we want to get closer to the customer. We had an ERP implementation across the group happening, which I was responsible for, and an ERP implementation in Vardaman Special Steels also. And we wanted to upgrade our, our capacity from 122 straight to 200,000 tons. So, all these were on, and we were also talking about a new plant or an acquisition. And that is when we decided, when we got in uh, realization, they, re they helped us understand that the capacity, management capacity would become a huge constraint. And again, as I said, our company is producing steel, not managing projects. The cost of delay of this project was one and a half crores in lost sales per day. And more than that, we had budgeted a 15 day shutdown twice. Anything more than that at any one time would mean very unhappy customers. So, what I told them was even if the project gets delayed a bit, it is ok, but shutdown cannot go beyond 15 days because there is no way auto companies are going to wait for steel to come in for their components. So, we needed a robust methodology and a project management office. These terms of low whip full kitting etcetera were Greek and Arabic to us, but we, we said once we hire a consultant, this is my approach, once you go to a doctor, listen to the doctor. So, once we decided to hire them and I hired them purely because Ajay Kapoor was a batch mate and he as I told you, he did all my practicals for me. So, I knew he guy, the guy knows what he is doing, that is how we hired them. And you know that is how no L1 etcetera out here, is a batch mate, he knows what he is doing, life is good. Uh, and of course, 
we looked at, we had to look at designing uh, incentives, etc., which we had not planned earlier. What if analysis if something goes wrong? Uh, what could be done? Innovative methods, for example, air freighting some equipment. Now, steel plant, can you think of air freighting stuff? But we put in that that supposing a delay is happening and air freighting something may cost high, but ultimately reduces the cost of the project. And de bottleneck critical work fronts. Again, the project execution office structure was the same as what LNT presented, so I won't spend time on that. Uh, solution elements and results. So, first is whip of initiatives. So, rolling mill upgrade, of course, was the main one. We shifted all the other projects step by step, and ERP implementation was postponed by a full year. So, I am going ahead with the ERP implementation for the rest of the group for my steel company. I said this team can't handle it, postponed it to next year. And uh, the upgradation 200,000 tons postponed by a year. A new steel plant, we stopped talking about it for now, postponed by two years. Uh, in the middle, we are looking at an acquisition also, we dropped the idea of an acquisition. Uh, full kitting, what did we do? Uh, putting in all the uh, risks, etc., and identifying them before define the roles. So, full project team was separately done, otherwise this was not something we had planned earlier. Earlier, one of our senior production people would have been looking after the production as well as the project. Now, that is the difference between a green field and a brown field. Green field, you know the project team is looking after just the project. This was brown field. And we designed incentives and penalties, but as we explained at that time, I was very clear, I am not going to put any penalties to the contractor. Incentives, we tried to figure out how to give them incentive. We are, I think, help us to help you to give you the incentive. Uh, incentives for the consultant and erection contractors, of course, procurement priorities, and onboarding of vendors from Sweden and Italy along with the technical consultants. So, helping the consultant understand this process, we took two days to help the consultant understand this process. And he came on, came on board, understood this very well. The advantage of this full kit was not a single drawing was late. Normally in projects what happens, you start work, you say, huh, drawing REA, REA, and then suddenly you find this particular drawing is left. So, each and every drawing, we did not start any work without the drawing in place, full drawing. So, contractor always had full work schedule in front of him. He was very clear, you will not be stuck in the middle for either drawings or materials. This was the, the original plan. Uh, we had worked out a plan, full kit, civil works would happen for uh, the reheating furnace and the other civil works will start later. And then we realized after discussion with the team that we need to, we were having too much of work as a later part of the project and then any delays would have led to further severe delays. Also management time would get affected. So, the first thing I did was all negotiation I allowed my team to finalize. So, the entire 150 crore project, I was involved in only one negotiation of a 10 crore reheating furnace. That too, my team forced me to get into the negotiation and I think I ended up paying 25 lakhs more than what my team would have negotiated. So, the entire negotiation was done by my team, including one equipment which was 80 crores, one single piece of equipment. Uh, they insisted I come and visit the visit Germany where the negotiation was taking place. So, I went for a day, said hello to both the people and I went off elsewhere. I said call me when the negotiation is done and the team did a better negotiation. They saved 20 percent cost compared to what I would have been prepared to pay. So, that is what a good team with delegation with the uh, um, trust from the top that I trust you to do a good job that makes a huge difference. So, with this happened, we pulled back a lot of civil work. So, overall in civil works, there was a lot of delay as was ex explained by LNT also. We had problems with bar binders, carpenters and then uh, uh, holy comes in and uh, harvesting comes in and all those things come in. But the beauty was that because we shifted the work, staggered the work, the overall impact on the delay of the project was not significant. And it enabled us to focus our entire attention 
So, at any one time, I had only one or two issues, and I was told my team very clearly, do not give me more than one attention, one issue to focus on, uh, and that one issue we could decide very fast. So, what did we do? For each vendor, we had the onboarding meeting. In fact, Margaret Schirmer, which is the Swedish company, they also explained to me, their MD told me, this entire experience was the first time for them in their entire experience of project management across the world. Uh, task preparation meeting every week, what will happen in the next 30 days, and a daily meeting at 10 o'clock to set targets for the day and review what is happening on a daily basis. Every 15 days, I would, I would get called for a steering committee meeting, but I told them that uh, uh, my general manager, whatever decision he takes, I am okay with that, but I was called in every 15 days for a brief 20 minute or a half an hour meeting. So, the beauty of this entire process was my time from the project point of view was free, I could focus on other priorities in the group. Uh, this was an interesting thing we did, every week there was a call, con call between the entire Margaret Schammer offices, their offices in Italy, their office in, uh, uh, Danily is the parent company of Margaret Schammer, so that is how Danily comes in, the Danily Italy, Danily India and Margaret Schammer Sweden, Chorus are consultants and us. We realized then that the coordination between Danily, India, Danily, Italy and Margaret Schammer was a bigger problem than the coordination between us and our contractors and uh, so we got that organization to talk better to themselves. And this became very easy, so everyone was asked what, what do you need from the other parties. So everyone knew beforehand and before the con call so what is needed from them by others. So, it was brought out very clearly and it helped smoothen the implementation process. Financial rewards up to 10 percent of contract value and we put it on certain milestone being achieved. So, the, the, uh, the, the consultant, the architect has is, is got 100 percent of his incentive and uh, even the civil contractor though he is late, we are trying to figure out how to give him uh, at least part of his incentive. But overall, uh, the technical specs, designs, everything happened much faster than what we imagined. This is how the project went. Towards the end, we were finding things were getting delayed a bit and then we have been able to pull back. The first one on the left is the overall rolling mill project and the one on the right is the, the first shutdown we did. We finished the shutdown one day before uh, target and we implemented more than what was design that means we pulled back some work from the second shutdown. What are the tangible results? After one year execution delays are contained and the project is one and a half months, I mean it is technically delayed because we had given a target of uh, I think 20th of uh, March, we will probably implement it by 20th of uh, April, so it is one month delayed technically on paper, but what was originally told to us by our contractors and by the equipment supplier, they were saying that you could not implement this project before June. So actually, as I said, as a management, I am happy, I think we are one and a half months before what could have been achieved. Uh, the tangibles, are the, are the intangibles, minimal firefighting, minimal time wastage from my, despite this huge project getting implemented. I have not had to stay in office more than 6, 6.15 in the evening on a single day. Uh, we did all kind of uh, what if analysis, we looked at flying in parts from abroad, we looked at certain parts that are getting delayed, can we change the scope to making those parts in India at higher cost, but looking at the overall cost being delayed and that is the advantage that if you are sitting there to take a decision, it is costing me money, that is ok, but overall cost is lower, uh, and that was fine. Interesting part was respect from Margaret Schammer. We are a small steel company. In textile, we are one of the world leaders. So, the kind of respect we get from our machinery suppliers is large. Uh, in steel, we are unknown commodity. And Margaret Schammer, who is this Vardaman, never heard of Vardaman and ordering this equipment. So, they did not know of us. And over the last one year, the amount of respect they have developed for our team is something which their MD personally told me uh, and they are, they, are, they are seeing this, they are showcasing this as a 
major project and seamless communication within and outside the organization. Again, I am telling you nobody in our organization had any project experience. So, uh, the communication that happened across the organization was fantastic. Uh, an interesting thing that we did when the Margaret Chamber people, so now the project is still in process, erection has begun. So, we had a, a kickoff meeting when the erectors came in. So, erector, they have a local erection company, the consultants, realization, our team, the contractors, we got all of them together. And I spent two hours that meeting, of a, out of a two day meeting, and I spoke to them only one thing. I said, we may be from different companies, different organizations, our objective is one the successful implementation of this rolling mill to make it a showcase project in India to enable world class steels to be produced from this factory to go in various countries to put India on a global map as a good exporter of special steels. And I said we are all one out here. Now, the moment you said that and we asked them all to write an intent we have a system in a steel company, we write out an intent together. So, together they spent 15 minutes and wrote an intent, positive things basically, that we will implement this project on time, this will be a project which will give us all, we will feel nice, we will we'll give us pride, all that kind of stuff was written and signed by everybody. Now, these supervisors who are not used to Indian settings, we made sure they were given royal treatment, because they are all professionals, they will deliver the job, but if you can get their heart into the job, they will deliver 20 percent extra. And that is my objective always, get people to work with their heart and get everybody to work with their heart. The consultant also explained to me later, he has not had this kind of experience before. So, the positivity that is coming in. So, small delay here and there does not affect anybody and everybody is waiting to cooperate with each other. Because if as a owner and as a client, my team is cooperative and not putting blame on the, uh, on the civil guy or putting blame on somebody, there have been delays that some equipment has got delayed. We said, okay, can you make up somewhere else? So, in partnership if you work, I think it makes a huge difference. Some of the comments from the project team, uh, Mr. Bansal, our general manager, the realization added a lot of value to this project in terms of coordination and will help us commission the project broadly within the desired timeline. Mr. Tuli is the head of projects, the integral part of the project team. He feels this is part of his team, this is his team, we do not see them as different. The consultant Popley uh, from Chorus, tremendous job in getting information on time from the manufacturer of the equipment. So, design all those delays that could have happened that the manufacturers supply details and therefore, the guys to prepare the design all those things happened in time. And Margaret Shimer also, the way I manage the project here is way better than any other project they have done in India. Uh, one major learning I think I have had, because we implemented, we got in realization after the project implementation had already started. My big learning is next time I do a project uh, to start with them right in the beginning, uh, either realization or somebody else, uh, but the point is the critical chain methodology right from the beginning. The good part has happened that Vardhaman Textile, the parent company without my knowing, I came to know later, engaged realization after seeing the impact of this in the steel company. So, this was a 150 crore project. But now on a 450 crore project of a textile operation in Madhya Pradesh, which is again a brownfield, but it, in a sense it is a new plant within an existing location, there is no replacement of equipment. So, we have hired them there uh, and I think clearly, I am very clear and I have discussed with uh, our consultants chorus that in the next, the greenfield steel project that we do, we are going to hire and start with this full kitting process even before we place a single order. So, those are the kind of learnings I have had through this process. Uh, I was a fan of Ellie Goldratt, I had read his book Gold several times, 
So, for me this process was not too difficult to accept or to understand, but I think it needs a major cultural change to get people to the, this method of management is totally opposite to what we normally think is the conventional way of managing projects. So, to change those processes is not easy and which is why exactly as Mr. Prabhu said from LNT, uh, unless top management commitment to this process is there, it won't succeed. So, uh, but I have seen that people are fast learners when they see the signal and ultimately this tight pressure Chinky is our project manager on the project site. The tight pressure this young lady puts in calling every day what's happened on this thing, the updating on a daily basis has helped this project go away. So, we are still in the middle, but the way I am seeing things, the project is doing well. What's next? Steady execution of this project, take the capacity to 150,000 tons immediately after this 120,000 is done, is done, and expand this execution to the other business units. Thank you everybody.